Welcome to Tollefson Physics. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at how an object uh, um, orbits another planet and we can actually predict what the mass of that planet is. And so in this particular case we're going to do some stuff that's pretty well known. We're going to look at the moon going around the earth and we're going to be able to predict what the mass of the earth is. And so okay we're going to use circular motion to figure that out. We're going to use uh, the idea of universal gravitation to figure that out. So here's a bad drawing of Earth and the moon. And the moon is 300,085 kilometers away. You can measure that. Um, there, there's several ways to measure that. One experiment that's been done is you can shine a beam of light, hit a mirror that an astronaut left on the moon, and have it come back and time it. And so you can figure out that from, from there. And then this is the average time that it takes the moon to go around. And that's just based upon observation. And so you, you basically you look at a star that doesn't move relative to, the back, relative to this. You wait till that comes back around to that same star and you get something like this. All right. Um, and so we're going to use that information to figure things out. And once again, I'm going to start like I always start with Newton's second law, right? F net equals mass times acceleration. And in this particular case, you know, we have force due to gravity. And yes, there's an equal and opposite force due to gravity um, on the Earth by the moon as well. Okay, but we're focused on the moon in this particular case. So what is the force that we're talking about? It's the gravitational force and we're going in a circle. All right, and so the law of universal gravitation is also equal to FG, so I'm just going to add an equal sign here, and that's GMM over R squared. And so let's go ahead, get rid of one of those masses, get rid of one of those radiuses, and I end up with V squared equals GM over R. So we've seen that before. And then the other thing that we've seen before and I'll write it to the side just to remind you. Velocity is the distance of a circle, in this case, by the divided by the period of the circle. So I'm going to substitute that in for v squared. I'm just going to write it to the right over t squared. All right. And then I'm going to um, simplify. Well, let's just cross multiply first because I think it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. If I cross multiply first, be careful. Make sure that you don't drop these squares and these uh, cubes. They're easy to drop, especially this pi squared. I see that dropped all the time. Just make sure you're careful with your algebra as you're bringing this forward. And then I just want to solve for the mass, right? And so I can do that. So if I look at the mass of uh, the Earth is what I want to know, that's going to be 4 pi squared over r cubed divided by um, g t squared. All right, so t, t I need to convert, right? So um, for t, I have 27.322 days. I know that in one day, there's 24 hours. And then I know that in one hour, there is 3,600 seconds, which is 60 times 60, if, if you don't know where that came from. And so the actual period of the um, moon is 27.372 times 24 times 3600 and so it's that number <laughs> two three six four nine four zero point eight seconds okay and so then we're going to put all this in there which i will do quickly so square that inverse that and then times four times pi um, times the radius. So this we have to think about, right? So when it's in meters, I have to add three zeros, right? So get rid of the K, three zeros. And then what is this in scientific notation? It's 3.85, so 3, 6, 7, 8 times 10 to the eighth meters. All right, so I'll type that in, 3.85 EE. Eight, and then I got to cube that and then I haven't divided by G yet and that's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 oops wrong button 10 to the negative 11 equals 
And so I get a mass of 6.039 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So 10 to the 24 is on the right scale. And then if we look at my handy dandy cheat sheet of celestial bodies, um, what the measured accepted value is 5.972 times 10 to the 24th, which actually is, is not terribly far off from a calculation standpoint. So, so there you go. You, you can get pretty close uh, within reasonable error. All right, so what you are able to see is we can do a number of different things with these equations. So I hope what you are able to, to tell is we could, by observing, thing, observing things in the universe, and if we can figure out, and there are ways to figure out distances, and you definitely can observe and measure an orbit of something going around. And these kind of things are done for, say, the uh, Galilean moons around Jupiter. And, and you can observe there's four very easy moons to see orbiting Jupiter. And so you can definitely figure out the orbital period. And so you can start to piece together some of that information. You can see how far away they are from the planet. And, and then you can start to infer things and be able to predict things about other celestial bodies. And that's you know a lot of what astronomers need to do is, is trying to understand the, the universe a part of understanding the universe is just ex understanding the solar system around us. And you know, while while we're not 100% certain what in the world gravity is, Newton's law of universal gravitation actually brings us a long way in predicting a lot of things. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you learned something, and we will see you next time.